just worship him. Just worship him. Maro lo hai zanda hai ka mari de ha. Oh maro sunda hai ka mari de de hai ka masundi ha. Re ta ka maru zinda hai ka mari hai ka masunda ha. Re to ka mari de hai ka masanda ha. Father, I worship you, Lord. I lift you up. I lift you up, Lord, above all, above all, Lord. I lift you up above successes, above failures, Lord. I lift you up. There is nobody like the ancient of days, the maker of the heavens and the earth, the one who spoke this world into being, to be. and in this and in it everything consists, Lord. We bless your name. We worship you. We honor you because only you deserve praise. Only you deserve worship. I bless your name, Mare de Hasanda. Roka Mare de Haika Masanda. Roto Kamare de Haika Masanda. Oh, be lifted above all other. from the beginning of the year. Thank you for giving us the privilege to see this day. Thank you so much for giving us the honor to be alive and for giving us another chance. Lord, we are grateful. Thank you for traveling mercies. Thank you for deliverance, Lord. Thank you for deliverance from the hands of death, sin, evil, and all kind of evil people and treacherous people. Lord, we are grateful. Father, we come again to say, Lord, only you are wonderful in our lives. You're so beautiful in our lives. And we appreciate your faithfulness, your mercy, your goodness, and your kindness. And all the saints will say, Amen. amen. I can't hear somebody say, amen. 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 Please smile to somebody. Welcome someone without shaking hands. Tell somebody you're looking beautiful. You're looking handsome. I am happy to see you in church. Long time ago in bed.
Sunset breeze, truly free. 
Hallelujah. Why don't you celebrate God with a mighty hand clap offering? Are you excited to be in church? Wish somebody next to you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance. Today we have uh, a surprise for all of us. We are having a ministration from God and Sanctuary. Amen. But before they perform, we'd like to take our Thanksgiving offering. Why don't you dip your hand into your bag, into your purse, your pocket, and take something big to say thank you to God. This morning, I want you to remember some one or two things God has done for you throughout the year and give a good offering. Father, let's lift up our offering high above our head. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, we have a surprise for the church. Give yourself a smile. Give yourself a smile and be happy because the king has been born for us and we remember him today. Amen. This morning, instead of sanctuary ministering, we have God and sanctuary ministering through a Christmas drama. So we would like you to just relax in your seats, enjoy the ministration, entertainment a bit, but administration as well. It's basically portraying who Christ was in heaven, how majestic he was, how royal he was, but had to let go of all that because of the love that he has for you and I, so that man can be restored. Amen. Please turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Merry Christmas. <music> According to St. John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God.
friends, who is man at all that Christ, Christ to oh, Christ, should come down to redeem them from their sins? Man, my brothers and sisters, man was created by God only to be his friend, companion, and give him pleasure. He only wanted man to live in another type of world, but also to experience his goodness, love, faith, and goodness. See? But man disappointed God. But man disappointed God and fell. They have been so wicked and have chosen to follow our fallen brother. Who knows his time is short? Satan, his time is so short that he's so angry and wants to take as many people with him to hell. Do you know that? Friends, our father is so merciful and full of compassion. It saddens his heart that man is in such distress. Pain, poverty, sickness, divorce, murder, and even COVID-19. So you know what? He took this very hard decision. Christ himself came down to die for these little creatures. Hmm. Would you kill yourself for a loved one? But Christ did that for you wicked men. You shouldn't be ungrateful and say no to his call. Hmm. Hmm. going to earth as man. Earth, that's that dusty and, and glorious place. place. I mean, how can he want to go to earth with all this beautiful, you know, streets of gold and this wonderful worship that he's receiving? I mean, earth, how can he go there? I mean, how? No way. I will never do that. Never. Never. With all these beautiful things I'm seeing here. No, 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 no. I can't. I can't. To save man. Man. Talk to you. I wanna tell you what I've been going through. I think I have a problem, and you may have it too. There's a guy who's chasing. He keeps chasing me. He keeps calling and talking. Says, baby, I love you. Mary, I can't wait to make you my wife finally. You know, we've been waiting impatiently, even though fire is burning in us. Wow, I love the way you smile. <laughs> Do you know something? It reminds me of the day I was born. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this morning. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, 
She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So happy. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> I've gotten a virgin and I'm very, very happy. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> ah. What am I seeing? Mary, is that you? happened to you woman you know I never touched you oh so you are not a virgin and you allow someone else to enjoy you freely oh Mary you've disappointed me yeah. So is that how you are? Oh, queen, to me, cool. Brabe, cool, mommy. Eradi kuimi to me ko Brabe ku mami O kuimi to me ko Brabe ku mami Eradi kuimi to me ko Brabe ku mami O swana mi swi Arahwana mi di O kuimi to me ko Brabe ku mami Eradi se wamba mi ni obia Brabe ku mami O swana mi swi Arahwana mi di O kuimi to me ko Brabe ku mami Eradi se wamba mi ni obia Brabe ku mami Hey, my name is Konu. You are still a virgin. Ah, can a virgin be pregnant? Okay, my job, Paul. Mary, Bobo, Voto. Bobo, you can't go to the
Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. this Mary no what should I do now Mary okay because God has spoken I'll take the heed chapter 2 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came...
behold, I bring to you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Brothers, I can see a very different star from the usual. Take a look. Yes, but this looks like a royal. A king is born. We must find him and pay homage to his majesty. Yes, let's go. The wise men put together their gifts and began a journey to Bethlehem following the leading of the star. The star stopped at the palace of King Herod. My king. Where is he, born king of the Jews? For we saw his star rise, and we have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. 
Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. My people, I've heard what you've said. Go and search delightfully for our new king, that I might also come with my people and worship him. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Woman, we saw his star rise, and we have come to pay homage to him. Here is my gift of gold. Present my gifts of men.
Jerusalem Ikayalami Kilo ndoloze Uhambe nami Zungangishi ilana Jerusalem Ikayalami Kilo ndoloze Uhambe nami Zungangishi ilana Oh, give it up for God and Sanchari. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. Give it up for them. This is our little Christmas play, actually entitled Rose of Sharon. Rose of Sharon. Just reminding us of who Christ was, how very important he was. But for the love that he had, he has for man, he decided to come and die. So let's not say no to his call. This play is written and directed by LP Yunus and Vanessa Sari. Thank you. <laughs> Jerusalem, Ikayalami, Ilondoloze, Uhambenami, Zungangishi ilana, Jerusalem, Ikayalami, Ilondoloze, Uhambenami, Zungangishi ilana, your feet. Let's go into the word of God. Put your hands together for them. Oh, clap your hands together for them. Very powerful. Very, 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 very powerful. Oh, clap your hands together. Very powerful ministration. Ask your neighbor, have you been blessed? All right. Thank you, God and Sanctuary. And um, thank you, my wife, for putting this together. I had no idea at all. Put your hands together for my wife again. I appreciate her for that wonderful script and uh, direction very powerful amen very creative god bless all of you kindly lift up your right hand to jesus ask god to speak to you today the second time even after speaking to you through the play or drama ask him to speak to you the second time tell him that you want to hear from him lift up your voice pray to god Pray to God. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to say things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom You know just what to do And I will love you Lord my strength I will love you And I will love you Lord my strength I will love you Lord And I will love you Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah, our God reigns forever Hallelujah, hallelujah, our God. 
Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we are grateful this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you. Thanks a million for this year. We are grateful. This morning, oh God, the gathering is unto you. It's not unto any man. I pray that you speak to us. Bless us this morning through the preaching of your word. Make my soul like the soul of a winged child this morning. Have mercy, O oh God, upon me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory and to your glory alone. I stop any work of the devil against us, against our gathering this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon all we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout a big amen. Clap your hands together for the Lord. Shall we be seated? You made a way. When our backs were against the wall. And it looked the same. It was over. You Made away. And we're standing, and we're standing here only because you made a way. You made a way. You made a way. When I back, when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. You made a way And we're standing And we're standing here Only because you made a way Standing here Standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best Nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out You're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You represent your heart you wrap us in your arm and step in Everything we need And everything we need you supply You got us in control And now we know that you made a way When our backs, when our backs were against the wall it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains You move mountains You cause the walls to fall With your power you perform miracles There is nothing That's impossible That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains You move mountains You cross walls You cross walls So far With your power you perform miracles There is nothing Oh, that's impossible And we're standing And we're standing here Only because you made You made the way in 2020 You made the way When I back When I back when against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made our way And we're standing And we're standing here Only because you made You move mountains All the mountains in 2020
even you move mountains You cause the world so far With your power You perform miracles There is nothing All mountains have been moved That's impossible And we stand in here Only because you make You move mountains You move mountains you pass the walls too far with your power. You perform, you perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we stand in here only because you mean. You are great, yes, you are. Holy One, you walked upon the scene, you raised the dead. In 2020 and in 2021, you reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything you retain about you is great. You are great, yes, you are. You are great, yes, you are. Holy One. You walked upon the sea, you raised the dead. You reign in majesty, you reign in majesty. Almighty oh, God, everything you retain about you is great. You are great, you are great, you are great. You are great. Oh yes, you. You are great. You are great. Everything written about you is great. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Everything, everything written about you is great. Oh, demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything, everything you retain about you. Oh, you are great. You are great. You are great. Oh, yes, you are great. You are great. You are great. Everything you retain about you. for the last time. Oh, demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything, everything. What a mighty God we serve Glory, glory, hallelujah Everything, everything you retain about you is great Oh, you are great you are great. You are great. Oh yes, you are great. You are great. You are great. Everything written about you is great. 
Clap your hands together for Jesus. Amen. God is great. He's good. We serve a great God. Somebody say amen. amen. Matthew chapter 1 has been a key scripture in December. Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 18 to 25, which you just saw dramatized. Matthew chapter 1, reading from the verse number 18. It says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was upon this wise. When, our, when as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted as God with us. Then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. From here we have been talking about a few good men. A few good men. A few good men. What's happening? A few good men. Somebody say amen. And I remember saying to you that not everybody in church is good. This week somebody stole our small laptop in the church. I believe it's a church member who stole the laptop. If you don't want trouble, if you don't want a small ant to enter into your body and trouble you, bring back the laptop. If you can hear me or you are watching me, bring back the laptop. If you don't want a small ant to enter into your body and eat you up in your secret parts, bring back the laptop. Or if you know the person who took it, tell him that a spiritual ant has been sent into their secret parts. If you read the Old Testament, you understand secret parts. That and to bite you the rest of the days of your life for stealing God's property that contains all messages and sermons that has been preached in the church. That spiritual ant is inside the body of the person now until the person brings it back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because not everybody in church is good. Not everybody who is saying, Lord, Lord, is serving God. Not everybody who is praying, coming for prayer meeting, clapping their hands, sweating a lot, rolling even on the floor. Not everybody is good. <laughs> not everybody is good. And not everybody in our families are also good. You can have brothers, have a lot of sisters, have a lot of brothers, a lot of family members, but not everybody is good. So the same Jesus who said that we should call no man good was teaching us how we can be good people in Luke 6 45 where he said a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is evil for of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. so if the same Jesus says call no man good on earth and is now teaching us how to be good people it tells you that the good people in the world they are not many they are few when they come to your house they come to your family they come to the church and they are looking for good people may somebody mention your name your amen is saying may somebody mention your name your amen is saying may somebody mention your name so we started looking at the subject a few good people with the mind that everybody in this church when they are looking for good people they'll be mentioning our names Oh, your amen is saying, may they mention your name that you are a good person. Oh, do you doubt the fact that you are a good person? May they mention your name that you are a good person. Then we began to ask ourselves, what are the things that Joseph did which qualified him to be called a good person, which we can also learn from? And the first thing we said was that Joseph, when he heard that Mary, his wife, was pregnant of the Holy Ghost, and he was angry, he decided not to make her a public example. You must never desire to disgrace people 
in public. He that should be called a good person must always cover the weaknesses of people. You know, there are times where you can know the secrets of people and sometimes people blackmail people because of the secrets they know about them. Now we are living in a very evil time when somebody is fornicating with somebody and the guy is taking a video. Then after taking the video, later when the girl is married, he will call the girl, come and let's do it again. If you don't come, I have the video of the one we did before. I will show it to your husband and they will blackmail. By the time you realize, the married woman has gone back because there's a lot of blackmail in the world nowadays. So we live in a very evil time where people are, are using the secrets of people against them. But you see, a good person never uses the secrets of people. Secrets that people have shared with them, he never uses them against them. You know, one day there was a quarrel in my office. Two sisters um, in the church were quarreling and they brought them to my office and um, we were talking and trying to solve the matter. Then the fight between them, it got to a crescendo. Crescendo means highest point, boiling point. One young girl and one elderly woman. The elderly woman went to the louvers in the office, broke the louver, one of the glasses, broke it. She removed it and broke it into two and was coming to cut the young girl. Why was she coming to cut the young girl? During the heated argument, the girl mentioned something about the woman's brazier, which only she knew, only she had seen it. And when she mentioned the thing, the thing stung the woman on the inside. She broke the louver blade and wanted to cut her into pieces. When somebody opens the door for you to enter their bedroom and you see something there, don't use it against them one day. When somebody brings you into his room, changes before you, you see his panty, you see her panty or boxer shorts, don't use it against the person one day. Be a good person. Good people don't disgrace people publicly. That day, from that day, that small girl, she took something from the woman. She took something from the woman. She took it from her. The woman's life has never been the same. So you become a very dangerous person when you are good at exposing the secrets and the weaknesses of people. Discussing the weaknesses of people. You become a very dangerous person. And anybody who discusses the secrets of other people with you is telling you that you are the next person. He will be discussing or she will be discussing when he walks away from you. So you must never enjoy conversations with people who are telling you things they know about the person. Never enjoy it. All they are telling you is that you are my next target. A good person never exposes the secrets of people. Covers it. There are things you know till you die. Nobody must hear about it. Till you die. If you're a good person, nobody must hear about it. The rest of the days of your life, nobody must hear about it. One girl slept with a girl and he went public, publicizing it. What was he saying? He said, eh, the woman... She, she is a man and a woman at the same time. Oh, what do you mean by she is a man and a woman at the same time? Meaning that she has small penis by her, her private part. And he went about talking about it. From that day to that man, he took something away precious from the girl. If you had not slept with the girl, would you have seen that thing about her? Good people are not plenty in these days. A lot of people nowadays are wicked. They discuss the secrets of people. The weaknesses of people. The mistakes of people they committed two years ago. They are still discussing it up to today. They are still talking about it up to today. When they see stone, they tell the person. When they see wood, they tell the person. When they see dog, they tell the person. Even the cats, they know the story. Good people cover the mistakes of other people. Like Joseph covered the mistake of Mary beautifully. Joseph had a mother. Joseph had a father. He had brothers. He had sisters. But he protected his wife. Number two. I said, good people obey the word of God. People without the word of God, then all of us, me and you, we will be uncontrollable people. Nobody can control us. 
without the word of God, guiding us, speaking to us, teaching us what to do. Every man in this place will be a, a terrible womanizer. It takes only the word of God, including myself. It takes only the word of God to put a wall around us and to keep us hedged in. So the man who doesn't do the word of God becomes a bad person. If you want to be a good person, you must allow the word of God to guide you. Because the Bible says in verse 24, Then Joseph being raised from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. He did what the word of the Lord had told him. If you don't obey the word of God, you will be destroyed. Allow the word of God to control your emotions, control your temper, control your mind, control your mouth, control your lips. Sometimes people tell me stories and they met this pastor and this pastor said this and the pastor said this and the pastor said this and my comment always is that a pastor doesn't talk like that. A pastor doesn't talk plenty. You don't have to talk plenty. Your words must be few. Your words must be few. Don't walk around talking everything you say some. Everything you say some. Everything you say some. The word of God must control you. The word of God says that let your words be few. Let your words be few. If you don't allow the word of God to control you, even in the coming year, you will be hedged in. You will be hedged in. And that hedge that is around you, you can break it one day. I pray that God will help us to be obedient to the word of God. This morning, I want to bring you the third one before I finish next week Sunday. I want to bring you the third one. The third one in verse um, 25. It says, and knew her not, Matthew 1, 25. He knew her not, still she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Here was the woman Joseph really wanted to uh, marry, chasing her. You saw Joseph telling her that, I mean, our, our, we are burning for each other. They were burning for one another. Then she was a child of the Holy Ghost. Something must have put some fear into Joseph not to touch Mary again. And whenever somebody has something around him that he could destroy, that he could use, that he could enjoy, but doesn't enjoy it, we call that person a faithful person. If you want to be called a good person in this world, the third characteristic about you must be that you are a faithful person. This morning I'm talking about being faithful. Being what? Faithful. Say it after me, being faithful. Oh, I can't hear you. Say it after me again, being faithful. I can't hear you. Shout it again, being faithful. Be a faithful person. Now, why did, why did Joseph not touch Mary again? Because God appeared to him in a dream through the angel and said to him, that which is conceived in Mary is of the Holy Ghost. I am the one who allowed her to be impregnated. So her body, I have hide it for two years. The baby in the womb, you are not supposed to touch it. You are not supposed to call him Kofi whether he's born on Friday or not. You are not supposed to name the child. The name I have chosen is what you must give to the child. And so Joseph didn't touch the body of Mary. Neither did he touch the firstborn son that she had given birth to because he was a faithful person. He defines for us what truly faithfulness is. What is faithfulness? When we say somebody is faithful, what is it? Number one, I'll give you two definitions. Number one, when we say somebody is faithful, what does it mean? Number one, number one, it means refusing to touch what belongs to God. Refusing to touch what belongs to God. When God said to Joseph, that which is conceived in your wife Mary is of the Holy Ghost. He was telling her, he was telling him that now Joseph's body, I have rented it. Hey, Mary's body, I have rented it. I have put a baby inside. The body is mine for the next two years. And Joseph understood the language. It belongs to God. Number two. When we say somebody is faithful, it also means the person refuses to touch what doesn't belong to him. What doesn't belong to you? You don't touch it. What belongs to another person? You don't touch it. You don't steal it. You don't run away with it. What doesn't belong to you? 
It won't touch him. Joseph knew that the child, Jesus, was not his. So he didn't touch Jesus. As soon as he was born, he just named him Jesus and left the boy to grow up himself, become a carpenter. After becoming a carpenter at the age of 30, he says, I'm on my own. I'm going to work for my father. Joseph just allowed the boy to be. Faithful people don't touch what belongs to God. Faithful people don't touch what is not their own. I'm preaching. So the question then is, what is it that belongs to God? What can we learn from here that we can think about? The first thing I want you to see is that God said to Joseph, he says, Mary's body, I have rented it. Now, you to your body. God has rented it. The first thing that belongs to God, which as a faithful person, as a good person who wants to be called a good person, or as a Christian wants to be called a good person, to show that you are a faithful person, is that your body don't touch it. The first thing you must not touch which belongs to God is your body. Your body. God told Joseph, I have rented Mary's body for nine months. Maybe nine months of the pregnancy. Maybe three extra months to deliver and um, flow and get healed and get okay. So for them, maybe and then maybe they expose out maybe six months before. So you know, maybe about one and a half to two years. God said, this body is mine. But you, God owns your body not for one year, not for two years. He owns it the rest of the days of your life. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20. It says, Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and that ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. The price is on you. The price is the blood of Jesus. Your body doesn't belong to you. Mary was carrying a pregnancy, carrying God on the inside, carrying Jesus on the inside. You are also now carrying God on your inside. And anywhere God goes into, the place becomes a temple. Your body is not your own. Your body doesn't belong to you. Wave your neighbor to your neighbor, your body doesn't belong to you. So your physical body, now God's spirit is dwelling inside. You cannot do what you please with your body. Dangerous. Joseph was so afraid to touch Mary because now God was owning the body of Mary for two years. But you now God is owning your body the rest of the days of your life. What do with your body? God has made you a steward over your body. Your breast, your buttocks, your lips, your thighs, your vagina, your penis, every part of your body, it belongs to God. When your children go to school, they are teaching reproductive. Do you think they, they tell that your body, your secret part, they mention everything like I'm mentioning it now. Every part of your body, it belongs to God. It is not for you. It is not for you. And much more, those of you who sing, those of you who work for God, those of you who are working in the house of God, your body is much more important to God. That body must not be yielded to sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It says, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Look at the next verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? If you have a dog in your house, which poops in the house by heart, you have a cat in the house, which poops by heart, you train the cat. Even when we're young, when the cat is pooping by heart, you took the cat and went to drag the face in the feces. So that the cat will not do it again. You drag the face of the cat in the face. Or is what I'm saying is not true. You drag the face of the uh, cat in the face so that it won't do it, do it again. Then if the cat continues and now comes to your sitting room, poo under the cushion, 
poopoos under the bed, poopoos all over the place. When people are walking about saying that they are looking for a cat to buy, you will sell the cat to the person. Why? Because that cat is defiling your house. Your body too. When you begin to defile it, giving it to fornication, giving it to masturbation, giving it to evil, the temple of God, you can become an enemy of God. You can become an enemy of God. If your tongue is not blessing people, but it's cursing people, undermining people, gossiping people, slandering them, putting them down, you can become an enemy of God. What are you using your body for? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Romans 6.11 says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in the last thereof. Neither yield ye your members, your breasts, as instruments of unrighteousness. Your tutui, as instruments of unrighteousness. Your bum bum, as instruments of unrighteousness. Your lips, as instruments of righteousness. Your hands that still, as instruments of righteousness. I know this morning I won't get any amen. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. God needs my body to use to bless somebody. God needs my body to use to lift somebody's spirit up. God needs my body. So if you begin to use the body and defile it and destroy it and you are doing things for which the spirit of God will be grieved and the spirit of God cannot use the body, you become an enemy to yourself. Many people are their own enemies, yet they are blaming God. They are blaming witches. They are blaming wizards. When you yourself are your own enemy. You are your own enemy. Who say body no get feelings? Body get feelings. Who say a pastor also doesn't have feelings? I have feelings. But you have to learn to yield your body rather to God. With your feelings, with your emotions, rather yield it to God. Masturbation is destroying the church of God now than ever before. Hey! Masturbation. Young people, elderly people, women now, even more, I even bring you more than the men. It's destroying the church of God. It's killing the destinies of people. People are defiling their body all the time. Fornication. Nowadays, they have even jumped from fornication. They have moved to other things. People are into stealing now more than ever. I said, somebody, the person who stole the laptop, is here looking at me, finny, finny, gani, gani. Stole the laptop. He did it in the trouser and ran away. But he's here looking at me or listening to me. As I'm preaching now, people are now more, more, I mean, more wicked than ever before. Their body, which is for God, they are using it for what doesn't bring glory to God. And people have gotten sick. Because they were defiling their body. It will amaze you that the same fornication somebody is doing and it looks as if everything is okay. The same as shower line somebody is going and it looks as if everything is okay. You, the very first time you try, the very first time you try, no, HIV, you have taken it. It will amaze you. The very first day you try, no, you have taken it. And you are like, but this is, I know she has been in the thing for 10 years old. I mean, the prayer only this one now. I mean, this one I didn't know what I was doing. No, I mean, your body, your body, it belongs to God. Have I said something, ma? Uh, number two. Number two. The seed. 
that God has given to you, it also belongs to God. There's a seed. Because now this was, we've spoken about Mary's body. Mary's body is your body. Now there is a seed. The seed is Jesus Christ, who God had put into the womb of Mary. You too, there are seeds that God has given to you. The first, your children. Your children. Your children are not for you. They are for God. They are all for God. All of them for God. Numbers 3.13. Jesus, God said, because all the firstborn are mine. You belong to God. If you don't give yourself to God, you become dangerous to his kingdom. So if you are to be living in the olden days, you should, by force, you have to become a pastor. Because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed all the firstborn of, uh, unto me in Israel. So he said, from the day I killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from that day I hallowed all the firstborns unto me. They are mine, say the Lord. He said, every firstborn child is mine because I took the firstborn of the Egyptians. But in the New Testament, God didn't just give one of his children. He didn't just give one of his children. He didn't take one of his children, called Jesus to us. He gave us his only begotten son. So it means that we in the New Testament, it is not our firstborn alone that belongs to God. All your children that come out of you, they belong to God. A mother who doesn't give the children to God and encourages them to stay away from God, you become an enemy of God. You become an enemy of God. There have been times people have been in the church. They are doing something. Maybe they are joined, they've joined the choir. They are singing. They are coming for rehearsal. Their mother will come. I don't like it. They are coming back late. I don't like the way they are doing They don't have time. Then when they stop, within three months, pregnant. Then the man who has impregnated them too, he's not interested in the pregnancy. Tormenting the kids, destroying their lives. Your children, they are for God. Listen, paying school fees is your duty. Don't say you are doing it for God. It's your duty. It's your duty. Because when the child comes, God will give you finances to take care of the children. It's your duty. Money that comes to you is for your children. It's your duty. The day you rather give them to God, that is when your rewarding system has begun. God will begin to take it for you and begin to open doors for you. All your children, they are for God. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Don't keep your children away from God lest they become homosexuals. You want your, your only son to be in the UK and stay there. You wait until he bring his, his friend Bobby to come and tell you that daddy, 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 this is my friend. This is my friend Bobby. This is my friend Bobby. We are getting married in two weeks time. Married to who? Married to Bobby. A boy is marrying a boy. We treasure some things above the things of God. Your children, whether they know God or not, it's your responsibility. Your children, they belong to God. So look at verse 25, Matthew 1 25. He says, And when she had brought forth her firstborn son, her firstborn son, he called his name Jesus, give him to God. It's a settled matter. But we in the New Testament, all the children that we have, they are for God. So you keep them away from God. You keep them away from God. And when we, you want to put them in international school, you want them to go to Cambridge, uh, international Cambridge something, something, so that they, know, they, will, they will not be, they will be international children. International children. International children. Right before your eyes, you will see your children changing and you will be amazed. Right before your eyes, you will see your children changing. One of my pastors told me, he told me that because of the preaching, he has to be preaching, he's here. Because of the messages he has to be preaching, he says there's pressure on him to obey the word of God himself. So imagine your child is coming to quote scriptures on holiness, scriptures on fornication. My memory verse for today is uh, 
and then he's afraid small. Then he says, Romans 6, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ, as the child is growing up, the day a boy wants to fornicate with her, he will say, no, 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 no. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Mother, don't keep your children away from God. Brother, push them. Tell them, go work for God. Oh, go work for God. Go work for God. I told you Patricia is in heaven. She's waiting for doors. She's waiting for louver blades. She's waiting for towels. She's waiting for wash hand basin. She's waiting for sofa. She's waiting for a bed in her house. If she has seeds on earth, imagine you die at the age of 70. You've got to heaven. Your house doesn't have a window. And your child is a pastor. Winning souls, bringing souls into the kingdom. You will get the windows in no time. Within a short time, the windows are provided. The towns are provided. With the one shot is provided. Everything is provided because everything your child does for the kingdom, you too, you become a partaker of it. So, those of you too who are into the business of aborting children, I didn't come to discourage you this morning. The ones you have aborted before, God has forgiven you. Don't go back to it. It's better you give birth to that child than to abort it. You the mentor, it's better you allow the girl to give birth. The small shame is bigger than the big shame that may be waiting for you in heaven. Allow. Number two, your tithes. Your tithes also belong to God. Listen, your tithe is not an offering. It belongs to God. Le Leviticus 17. Le Le no, Leviticus 27. Sorry. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Leviticus 27 verse 30. It says, All the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the ground, or of the fruit of the tree, it says, it is the Lord's. It is holy unto him. 10%. It is not that you is, is an offering. No, this one, it belongs to God. Whether you are sad to give it to him or not, he is not looking at it. It belongs to him. As for your offering from the 90%, that one he says, don't give it with sorrow. Don't give it with a sadness. Don't give it because anybody is giving you pressure. It says, for God loves a cheerful giver. As for the 90%, he says, that one, be happy when you are giving it. But as for your tithe, he doesn't care whether you frown your face or not. Government is taking 25% from you. And God is asking you for 10%. And you say, what? The 25%, the government has found their way. Sometimes even the person who is taking a salary and is paying the 25% in, in income tax, when he buys as a clamor, also pays VAT again, he's paying more. Multiple tax. Multiple tax. Your tithe. It belongs to God. Don't be chopping the tithe. Don't take a loan from your tithe. Don't take it. it it's not yours. It belongs to God. 10% of your salary. 10% of your profit. 10% of your increase. It belongs to God. Give it to God. The person who tells you don't pay your tithe. Is keeping you and making you an enemy of God. It is not showing now, but eventually it will show. It may not show now, but eventually it will show. Your tithe. God says, it is mine. It is mine. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here with, say yet the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there be not room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Your tithes, it belongs to God. You must bring it into the house of God. 
by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Everything God gives to you, he says a tenth of it is mine. Give it to him. Give it to him. Joseph said, God, this is your seed. Take it. I don't want it. Anything. Jesus got missing. Twelve, three days, they were looking for him. They found him. When they found him, 12-year-old boy looked at the father and the mother and said, how is it that you sought me? We still know that I must be about my father's business. Joseph looked at Mary and said, uh, have you heard your son again? Uh, let's go. It's your son. Let's go. And they took him. He didn't touch him. Due to your tithe, it belongs to God. Another thing that belongs to God, number three, your first fruits. Your what? Your what? Oh, I can't tell you. Your what? Your first fruit, it also belongs to God. Your first salary, your first profit, your first of everything, it belongs to God. God says, I want it. Romans eleven sixteen. 16, it says, For if the first fruit be holy, it says the lamp also shall be holy. And if the root be holy, it says so are the branches. It says the branches too shall be holy. So when you give your first fruit to God, as the first one is blessed, all the other salaries that will follow, they will be blessed. It doesn't necessarily mean that your salary will be big, but what it means is that it will be enough to take care of everything you need. It will make you an enviable person to all those around you. When there were only two brothers on earth, the only thing that brought a quarrel between them, that caused one to kill the other because of enviness, because of jealousy, the only thing that caused it was because one gave the first fruit, the other didn't give the first fruit. Those who paid their first, their first fruits, they become enviable to all the people around them. Your first fruit. That's why you must encourage your children to give their first fruit to God. You will enjoy the, the, their labor, the fruit of their labor. You shall enjoy it. When the first is blessed, all the others are blessed. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. It says, it says, the first of the first fruits of all and every oblation, every oblation means every gift. Of every sort of oblation, of every sort of oblation means um, of every type of gift. They are the priests. In other words, you are supposed to bring it to the priests. Then it says, the first fruit even of your dough, your corn dough, your cassava dough, it says you shall bring it to the pastor. The pastor shall pray over you so that the blessing will rest in your house. Never be taken away. Your first fruit, it also belongs to God. When you give it, God will open the door for you. I told you during the COVID, a sister who is not a church member, who is not connected to me in any way at all, we just, we just got acquainted through somebody and asked me, gave me some dream. I interpreted the dream for her. God blessed her. Then she paid her, her first fruit. That sustained, I mean, kept, I mean, took care of all the bills of the church during the COVID for the five months or something. Just recently, about three weeks ago, after paying that first food, she says her salary has been increased 50%. By 50%. Her salary has been increased again. In a foreign land. In a foreign land. When I mention the amount, you'll be, you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid. Everybody in the church must prosper. But when you become stingy, holding on to things, you will very soon you start fighting over property with your brothers and sisters instead of making your own. Instead of making your own. You will start fighting over what belongs to your mother instead of making your own. Make the way bright for yourself. What belongs to God, give it to God. What did Jesus say? He says, what belongs to Caesar, give it to Caesar. And what belongs to God, give it to God. There are things that belong to God. Don't touch it. How can we be faithful to God? Let me just close with that one. How can we be faithful to God? Number one, the fear of the Lord. Everybody say after me, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. It's when you have the fear of the Lord, you, 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 you will be afraid. You will be afraid. 
You know, one day I was sharing the story in the first service. I think last two years, December, I was standing right in the middle here and I was preaching. In the middle, maybe about 15 minutes into, into the message, I felt as if somebody came out of me and stood at the side. And as soon as I had that feeling, immediately the preaching, it changed. I couldn't follow. I, did, I couldn't remember many things. And, 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 and then I heard the Holy Spirit said, I have it wrong. I have it wrong. Because what I was supposed to pray about, I didn't pray about it. And the Holy Spirit said, I have it wrong. The feeling he gave me that day, I always remember it till today. I don't fear anything. The only thing I fear is for God to, be get, to get angry with me and for him to withdraw himself. I am finished. When that fear is in you, you will be careful. You will be careful. In my room, you can ask my wife, we don't discuss anything. Evil, speaking evil or something. No, 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 no. It's not a go area. I tell her, no, 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 no. We don't allow. Because when you are talking about other people, you are opening the door for things to come. You can allow God to take himself away from you. I told her recently, a man went to heaven. And when he went to heaven, there was a bad story written about somebody in the graphic. And the man was judged. And they told him, for reading that paper, for reading that news that you read, you agreed to the lie the people have spoken about that man of God. And they held it against him. So me, when I see caption, Archbishop has done something. Hey! Pa! God! You, you read it. As you read it, you are joining the people who wrote it. When you fear God, eh, what belongs to God, you will leave it. You will leave it. You will leave it. You know, I was waiting on God recently, and I think last Sunday or something, something somebody came to the office and came to give me an envelope of thanksgiving and said, this envelope, we are using it to say thank you. So the person gave it to me. When the person left, I took the tithe immediately and gave it. But from the time the person left until Monday morning, I, I had this feeling that no, something is not right. Something is not right. So I said, ah, what is it that is not right? The Holy Spirit said, the thanksgiving, are they thanking you or they are thanking God? Are they thanking you or they are thanking God? I said, I can't go and ask them this question. Are you thanking me or you are thanking God? So I said, look, the rest, I just transferred you back to the church. Forgot about it. It belongs to God. Go touch it. When you fear God, when you fear God, what belongs to him, you will never touch it. The glory that belongs to God, you will not take it. You will not be standing somewhere and say you are very powerful. You will not stand somewhere and say you are very great. There is no great person in this world. Everybody is an ordinary person. Those who look great is because there is a great God standing behind them, making them look like they are great. The fear of God. You are about to touch your wife. If you have that fear, that that hand that is going to beat your wife, it can become leprous immediately. You will stop it. You put it in your pocket. When the hand is there, you put it in the pocket. And you rather give me 50 CDs. <laughs> but if you don't have fear, if you don't have fear inside you, I fear God. I fear God. I fear God. Hey, I fear God. I'm too afraid of him. If he should withdraw, he even takes his hand one finger away, you are finished. Somebody was describing an accident she had this year. She was crossing the road. Moto hit her. The motor threw her into the sky and she fell. As she was landing, a bigger car also came to hit her, went into the sky and came down. As she was coming to land again, the next car, bang, she went up again and came down. Then this time around, she fell under an articulated track. When she fell down, the next car that came was an articulated track and the tie was about to walk over her head and she, she pulled her head back with a little strength that was left. Her bones were broken. She was giving a testimony last week. And she said, for once she saw 
that when you cross the road and nothing happens to you, it is because angels were protecting you. Angels, they protected you. Because you never thought that an Okada can just strike you and then that is the beginning. If the devil should get you, what he will do to you? Oh, don't you think so? If the devil should really get you or get your children or get your husband, what he will do to you? <laughs> when that fear is inside you, what belongs to God, you will give it to him. Look, it is something that moves somebody to write that song. My body, eh? Hey, now God that go give a move. So if nothing happened to that person, that person will never write that song. That person, you don't eat bangu and write such a song. Something must have happened to you. Some you must have been through something. Then you realize, hey, now from today, my body, hey, now God that go give a more. Now my body, hey, a day for my God. My body, hey, now God that go give a more. My body, hey, a day for my God. Yeah. If you haven't seen something before, you say, Oh, my body, eh? he did for Jojo. My body, he did for Amma. You haven't seen anything before, but when you see something, you will say, Your body, he did for God. He did for God. He did for God. People have looked for pleasure, it has eluded them. People have looked for joy, it has eluded them. People have looked for whatever. It has eluded them. If you give yourself to God, he will bless you. Finally, self-control. Control yourself. Control your what? Control yourself. Self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Joseph didn't touch Mary. He had feelings, but didn't touch her. I pray that God will help us this morning. That when they are looking for good people, they will mention our name. That we are also faithful people. Stand to your feet and let's pray. Oh, I know you won't clap and appreciate the word of God. <laughs> it's a hot Christmas message. <laughs> hot Christmas message. But full of revelation. Full of revelation. Lift up your hands to Jesus and pray. Tell God that God, help me Lord to give myself to you. To give my days to you. Lift up your voice. Talk to God. Lift up your voice. Talk to God. Lift up your voice, talk to God. Moro bobo hushi makapale mukuza. Imo lo bidi mi katapa yana bamosh. Moro bolo biza makoti maladi bokosho. This morning, you've heard the word of God. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for coming to die for me. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I pray for everybody here this morning. Everybody watching online. Let the grace of God be strong on you. Let the fear of the Lord be inside your heart. That you will be afraid to touch what belongs to him. That you will give everything that belongs to him. For him and for he alone. In the name of Jesus. I heal all sicknesses this morning. Receive healing inside your body. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.